So I think this is an issue for everybody and it pops up quite a bit in the mom community. There is no perfect, Nicole, right? Like you know that. I think, I think it's about how you balance your judgment on yourself. Let, let's make this a combo, not just a standard question. Like when I say that, Nicole, like you, you do understand what I'm saying, right? Like you're the judge and the jury. I mean, what every OG parent will tell you anyway is no matter how much you try, your parents are gonna blame, your kids are gonna blame you for everything anyway. <laughs> and I actually think that's a liberating kind of comment. And I think, I, you know, like, like, you know, I hear in the mom community a lot, like, you don't get it. We have to be a perfect mom and a perfect, you know, uh, entrepreneur. And I'm like, no, I don't think you, this is when I talk to my friends, I'm like, I don't think you get it. Everybody has that. There are dads that feel like they have to provide the finances if they have a stay at home mom or vice versa. There are moms who are the entrepreneur, the mom and the breadwinner. There are people who are insecure about their looks and they, they're like, you don't get it when you're 380 pounds, the world, like there are minorities, there are like white males have plenty of their own Michigas too. Like, you know, everybody's got stuff. And I think it's this judgment on ourselves that is the ultimate game. Like you're just, I think you just have to realize if you have good intent and you're trying as hard as you can, if you have a bad Tuesday or a bad May or a bad 2021, it's still gonna be okay. And once humans understand that, then shit gets good. Wow, thank you so much. I mean, I, I think what you said is, is definitely spot on. Um, I am definitely my own worst critic when it comes to feeling like I have to do everything all at one time. A hundred, like even the way you asked the question and even the way you read it, like I just could taste it. Like you're the judge of you. Once you start accepting yourself for your efforts and your intent, instead of the output that is judged by the outside, you're judging yourself because you're overvaluing other people's opinions, Nicole. I absolutely am. Thank you so much, Gary. Does that, I, Nicole, let, let, um, I, think this is, this yeah, I think this is gonna help people, so I'm keeping you on. Like, you understand what I'm saying, right? The sec- definitely my own worst yeah, and and, and uh, but why? It's, it's definitely something that I've been working on. But why? And you'll see if you play this out. It's very likely because you're overvaluing other people's opinions. Whether that's your mother, whether that's your sister, whether that's your best friend, whether it's the community, you need to get into a place where you just don't value their opinion on your motherhood and your entrepreneurship. Yeah, I definitely need to reevaluate people that I have around me um, and, and put myself in a better place to where I can, um, you know, I have people cheering for me um, versus people who are, you know, I'm, I'm constantly struggling to, to be like. So, yeah, Nicole, 100% and, and Nicole, let's stay here because I think you're helping a lot of people right now. You know, yes, you can audit your circle and start to focus on that. You could also change the narrative, which is, when Sally Magoo is making a snarky comment for whatever reason, you could really genuinely be like, Sally Magoo, I really appreciate that and I'm sure it's coming from a nice place, but you worry about parenting your kid and I'll worry about parenting mine. Yeah, um, actually I was just in a situation with that this week um, and I, I definitely had to exit myself from the situation because um, you know, as a mom, it's, it's really hard to get parental criticism from somebody else who feels like they're doing a better job than you. Uh, yeah. And, and don't forget, parenting is like a sports game. That mom may be thinking they're doing a better job than you, but the score is 17 to seven in the first quarter of a basketball game. One thing that might help you, Nicole, is say, that's cute, but like, let's see how these kids' lives turn out. And oh, by the way, parents, having their self-esteem wrapped up in what their kid's doing is the ultimate vulnerability. You can be proud and love your kid, but like too many parents are deep in this shit now and whether the kid is nice, dresses slutty, is good at sports, is not a good student, all that shit has gotten way too close. The reason we've gotten too deep in this shit, people, people really had better boundaries in the past, kids went outside, parents didn't know every fucking little thing. I had 800 things brewing. My mom knew none of that. And I think that's another thing for you to layer into this conversation, Nicole. Yeah, 
If you think that Sally Magoo, who's judging you, has any fucking clue of what's going on with their child, that makes me laugh. Right. It's, 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 it's unfortunate and really once you flip your mind into feeling compassion for them instead of anger towards them, your life will get way better. When I come across that in my life, I smile with kindness and I'm like, I really appreciate your interest, but I've got this and I really wish you and your family nothing but good and the conversation's over. If you, Nicole, if you, correct, if you practice being the bigger person and shutting the door for any engagement, then you're kind and candorous and you're moving on. You're not giving them any ammo for engagement. People's, People's overreaction to that behavior is what feeds the oxygen of that behavior. When you say, listen, Karen, I really appreciate it and I'm, you know, I'm sure you're a wonderful person and from your perspective, I can see how maybe you came to that conclusion. But as you can imagine, just like I don't know everything about your daughter, you don't know everything that's going on. And I promise you, I feel very comfortable in the way this is going for the happiness of my child in a hundred year period, not a hundred day period. So I appreciate it. And if you ever want to talk about things, it's cool. Like that kind of talk, got it? I don't. Look like I, you're trying to do that. You know what I mean? Of course I do. First of all, I think that naturally happens by being a human being. First and first and first of all, thank you so much for your service, Austin. I really mean that. Number two, back to the question, you're going to be you. You're going to be set apart by you to begin with. I think, again, there's general advice that sometimes puts people down the wrong path. I think what you need to do is build an audience first. And I think it's very hard to do that on YouTube. It, you know, first of all, it takes a long time and it takes a, a lot of craft. And I think you being on Clubhouse right now, if I'm you, I'm starting a room right now called like military investment advice and just sitting in, at first it's six people that were from the military or grew up in the military or military. Like, I think you just find places that you can naturally build audience. I think you can build a much bigger audience on Clubhouse than you can on YouTube every day of the week right now for the next six months. I don't think, I, I don't want you to make a decision that it has to be YouTube. Okay, yeah, that, that's, that's really awesome. I, honestly, I have thought about that. Um, the main thing is, yeah, like you said, like, if I'm just starting a room and I'm sitting there talking to myself, like, I didn't know how to, you know, really just. The, the, best way, the best way to start talking is to be a great listener. When nobody knew who I was on Twitter, all I did was reply to people on Twitter about wine, because that's what I knew. What you can do is first become a contributor to a lot of rooms that talk about finance and investing, speak towards that military angle, and start amassing. I mean, you've already got, you know, you know, 76 followers in here. Nobody knew who the fuck you were. You probably said some shit that mattered in some room and people started following you. I think you need to become a contributor be before you become a host. Go to dinner parties before you throw one. If you moved to a new town and everything was about the dinner party scene, you couldn't just throw a dinner party when you first moved in. Nobody would show up. Nobody knows who you are. You just moved in. What you want to do is talk to somebody at the market and then they invite you to their dinner party, right? Then you go to that dinner party and you do a new, nice job conversating. 18 months later, you're throwing a dinner party. Got it? Um, how do you get focused and formulate a plan in slower moments? Um, you know, first, I, I, in, for people that are living this kind of life, you have to be very thoughtful about how you manage your money, right? Because I, I notice a lot of people that run hot and cold don't spend money properly, which then when they have cold periods creates an enormous amount of anxiety. So that's one thing that's on my mind for you to think about that it's hidden to a lot of people that live this lifestyle, which is 
okay, right? Some people have different skill sets of managing money, but it's a very obvious one to me that causes issue. Um, two, for me, it's all about brand building. I loved what I heard from you. Like, I would be, you know, when it's slow, that's a day when I can go on Clubhouse for five, six, seven hours and talk about voice acting and host a room for nine people or reach out cold to other, you know, voice actors or, or whatever networking is appropriate within my ecosystem. I, I think the thing I think about is brand building and transacting and managing money around it. The end, it's a very simple game. Every time you're, you know, it really can be that simple, Gina. Like, when when you don't have anything brewing, you're building awareness, starting a podcast, doing a YouTube show, DMing unlimited podcasts to be on to speak about voice acting. You know, like, just just grinding, you know, working, because I can't be on a job. Then when I'm doing a job, I'm doing a job. But most of all, I think the undertone to this whole community is money management, because I just see it time and time again, people, overspending when they've got dollars coming in, which makes them vulnerable when they go through a three month drought period. What is the percentage of time you should be spending on these different platforms from YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, to LinkedIn, and now Clubhouse Go, percentage wise? So Benji, great question. Let me ask you a question. Of the platforms you're on, which one gets the most organic reach because you've already, because I know you have a profile and I know YouTube's one of them, has the most organic reach currently based on the algorithm and the community that you built? Well, definitely YouTube, but second is now Clubhouse. Makes sense. So to me, Benji, if I'm you, I would probably create a lot more YouTube videos. Notice how earlier I said to somebody, hey, start making Instagrams that don't do as well, but accomplish what you want. If I'm Benji, I'm putting out way more YouTube videos around Clubhouse, around LinkedIn, and around TikTok, because those are the three places where organic reaches through the roof, and so that you can diversify and build up profiles on all three. Make sense? Yeah. 